Hey everyone, I'm Jean-Paul and you're watching the second video of my VideoSync mini-series. In a previous video I showed you how to install VideoSync with one or two macOS devices and we took a good look at the workflow and the basics of how to blend different videos and channels. And if you missed any of that, there is a link to it in the description. Now in this video I'm going to show you all of VideoSync's instruments and their features, so let's dive right in and start with squares. We can find squares here in the instruments folder inside the video sync plugins folder inside the user library. From there we can grab squares and put it on a MIDI channel just like any other instrument in live. And before we get started, I just want to point out real quick that if you click and hover over any of these parameters of any video sync device, you will find information about those parameters here in the info view. So here at the top, we have a grid of two by two. So we have two columns and two rows. And if we want the squares on that grid to appear on the screen, we have to trigger MIDI notes starting from C3. So let's make a MIDI clip and let's quickly make four notes starting from C3 and moving up. And let's turn these into legato notes and hit play. And now we see four squares. Now we have a total of 128 different keys here in the piano roll. So that means that we can get a grid going with a maximum of 128 squares on it. So for example, I can set uh, the grid to, let's say, uh, eight columns and five rows. And then here I have a MIDI clip with 40 notes in them. And let's trigger that. Now, obviously these notes are just running up right now, but you can change the order of these notes completely and basically create any pattern you desire. Now back to the device. We can adjust the width here and the height of the squares. And now we have a nice little gap in between the squares. Then here we have the opacity section and currently the squares fade out for the duration of one beat at currently 120 BPM. Now we can also let them fade in a little bit at the beginning, but since the notes are pretty short, it's hard to notice in this case. It's more noticeable here when we turn on the size section. So now the squares also shrink for the duration of one beat and we can make them grow first before they shrink. And then we can determine whether we want that growing and shrinking to happen on the X, Y, or both axes. And that's really all you can do with squares on its own. It's a pretty basic device, but it's true power lies in combining it with clever routing and effects. And I don't mean just video effects, but MIDI effects as well, as shown in this example, where the MIDI effect random is causing the squares to appear in a random order. We will look more into these examples in the next video, which will be all about video sync's effects. But for now, let's move on to Simpler. And you'll see that the video simpler looks very similar to the audio simpler. There's only a few small differences. So let's start out with those. We have stretch mode. So whenever you load a video into the video simpler, um, here you determine how that video, if it's on a lower resolution than the screen you're running on, you can determine how that video should be scaled up or stretched or whether it should be shown on its original size. Then next we can let the opacity be controlled by velocity. Currently that's not the case. And the attack and release are both given in beats as well. And the same applies to the fade in and fade out parameters in the one shot and slice modes. Now back to classic and let's load in a video. Let's do the same one as before, the okay one. And just like with the audio simpler, we have to trigger C3 to play the video on its original speed. So now I'll trigger C3 and a couple more, and you can see as many as six videos play at the same time. And that's because voices has been set to six and blend to additive. If I set it to alpha, we will always only see one video play at the time. So basically it's like monophonic playback, but with video. However, you'll notice that with this video, we don't get any audio and there is audio in that file. We've heard it before in the previous video. So to hear that, we actually have to create an audio simpler because this video simpler does not output any audio. So let's create an extra chain and grab an audio simpler and drag the same video file in here. And now we get audio output as well. 
Now we also noticed that the video will play back faster on higher pitches and slower on lower pitches. So in that video and audio simpler are very much the same. So since there is an overlap between the two devices, the audio simpler and the video simpler, I want to be able to control parameters from both the devices. So that's why I made this preset, the audio visual simpler. This allows you to control the start, loop length, total length, volume and opacity sensitivity to velocity, attack and release and fade in and fade out times for both the devices at the same time. So here, if we go to the audio sampler, you can see the selection over the waveform, for example, and that it changes as I move these parameters. Whereas here with the video sampler, that is not the case. So just to get a bit more visual feedback, you can use it as well. It's really up to you. Um, I'm sure not everyone wants to use audio and video samplers at the same time, but just in case that you do, I made a preset for it and you can download it from my website. On top of that, I also made some presets for drum rack for 16 pads and 64 pads, which all contain this device. So just to speed up your workflow, get you going easier so that you can, for example, trigger videos on push, a launch pad, or just a regular MIDI keyboard. Now to finish things up, I just want to look at a few more modes. Namely the one shot, which is, well, the same as with the audio sampler. So we'll just go and skip that one and go straight to slicing mode. So going here as well. So slicing mode starts from C1, contrary to one shot and classic mode that starts at C3. So it's C1 and up to trigger all of these different regions, because right now the slicing mode is set to region. And in the audio simpler, we have four slice by modes, but in the video simpler, we only have two. So that's why I set it to region and I set the number of regions to 24. Now, why did I do that? Well, if we take a random MIDI effect from Ableton Live and put it in front of this one, set the chance to 100% and choices to 24. Now, if I trigger a C1, it will simply trigger one of the 24 regions thanks to this random MIDI effect. Now, let's lower the fade out time a little bit because currently our playback mode is set to mono. So that means that we get a fade out time of, well, whatever we put in here. So let's say like 95 milliseconds. So I press the key and once I trigger a note, it immediately starts to fade out within 95 milliseconds. Now, if I set it to true, as long as I hold down the MIDI note, the video will keep playing. And once I let go, then it will fade out. And then there is freeze, which will play the slice until the slice ends, then it freezes the screen, and once I let go of the note, then it fades out. So we have those three modes. Cool. And that's pretty much it for the video simpler in this video. Now, again, we're going to look some more at it in combination with some effects in the next video, but for now I just want to take a look at the last instrument device of VideoSync, which is the external in. So the external in is an instrument, but we cannot really play it like an instrument since it doesn't do anything with MIDI notes. But it does have some benefits for being an instrument and I'll show you in a little bit. Now let's look at track first. So track is basically a routing element. So with this, we can select the output from any channel within this project and feed it into this current channel. So th the track element here simply allows you to fetch any video signal from any channel in live. So any video output coming from these channels can be fed into this channel and then I can do whatever I want with it. The next we have Siphon and Siphon is basically rewire, but for video. So if you have any other apps that can output Siphon, then I can receive it within VideoSync. So currently I have another app running in the background called Processing, which is a coding app that will allow you to create visual images through code. So I have a project running in the background and if I open the list here, it shows Arcs, which is the project and Processing, which is the app. So I'm just gonna select this and this is what Processing is outputting into VideoSync. And again, I can put effects on this and do whatever I want with it. All right, now the last thing, device. And this is all about external devices. So for example, cameras. And currently I have three cameras hooked up to this iMac, uh, including the webcam. So let's take a good look at that. And you can see me here. Hello, welcome. Uh, so that's the first camera. And I can group this thing. And let's duplicate these. So now it becomes really bright. Uh, but then if I switch these to the different cameras, 
and then use the solo. I can use this to switch between cameras. Now, sadly, these solo buttons are not assignable to any keys or MIDI controllers. But what we can do is automate the mute buttons. So uh, I'm just going to click this first one. And now I'm going to make a MIDI clip. And in that MIDI clip, I can apply automation. So let's make it a three beat loop, a three beat repetition. And I'm just going to click this mute button now and then turn that off over here. And then the third one, and there we go. And now if I play this, you see that we get the different cameras. And there you go. Pretty cool, isn't it? Not sure at which camera I should look. All right, back to the main camera. And with that, we've come to the end of part two of this tutorial. We've taken a good look at all of VideoSync's instruments, and in the next video, we'll finish up by covering all of the effects. And while doing so, we'll also take a look at some of the visuals I showed you earlier and how those were made. Now, for any questions, please use the comment section. And I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.